One of the questions that exists for us about Australopithecines is how sexually dimorphic they were. This is a question that exists at both the species level and the genus level. So across all the Australopithecines, how much sexual dimorphism do they have? And with an individual species that we've identified in the fossil record, how sexually dimorphic are they? In other words, how different are the males and females? This topic is important for a number of reasons. First of all, recall that sexual dimorphism, the average difference between males and females, is one of the factors that's a primary force in driving the amount of variation within a species. So trying to understand whether the difference between two fossils is a result of them being different sexes but the same species, or different species, partly involves understanding or having at least a baseline model expectation of how much sexual dimorphism to expect. But there's a more important issue at play here as well, and it has to do with arguments about what kind of social structure we are recreating for these species. And in this context, recall that sexual dimorphism in primates is at least in part related to the kind of mating systems that we observe. So species that tend to have more competitive mating systems, where males are competing for access to females for reproductive success, tend to have more sexual dimorphism. So for example, in chimpanzees, where there's a lot of male-male competition, there's a roughly equivalent amount of sexual dimorphism as we have to humans. In gorillas, where single males tend to monopolize mating opportunities, and there's a lot of male-male competition to get hold of that monopoly, we see a large amount of sexual dimorphism, where males are much larger than females. So making an assumption or an inference about how much sexual dimorphism there is within a fossil species is in part telling us something about what kind of social structure we might expect to find. And in the case of the Australopithecines, there have been arguments in two different directions. One argument suggesting that they have a lot of sexual dimorphism and are basically like some of the apes, for example, chimpanzees or gorillas, when it comes to the kind of social system we might expect to find. Others have argued that there's roughly a human level of sexual dimorphism in the Australopithecines, in which case we might expect them to be more human-like in their mating systems, with perhaps more monogamous kinds of relationships or more monogamous kinds of reproductive systems being present. Recall that the only other monogamous ape is that of the gibbon, or the siamang, which also has essentially no sexual dimorphism, even less sexual dimorphism than we actually observe in humans. So identifying the amount of sexual dimorphism within a fossil lineage potentially tells us or helps us to correctly identify the taxonomic categories, as well as gives us information potentially about the reproductive systems being present. One of the challenges in trying to infer the amount of sexual dimorphism is a statistical one. If we have a limited sample of fragmentary individuals, trying to reject the hypothesis that we either have an elevated amount of sexual dimorphism, say something like a gorilla, versus having a human-like level of sexual dimorphism becomes very challenging. The reality is likely to sit perhaps someplace in the middle, making it difficult to distinguish those two models of variation, and therefore those two models of potential reproductive systems. So one of the open questions we have for Australopithecines, one of the reasons we still try and find more and better and more abundant samples, is to try and get at this question of what kind of variation we expect to find at a population level, and particularly what kind of sexual dimorphism we might observe, with the idea that that gives us inference not only to correctly identify species, but to infer potential reproductive and social systems within these primates.